The end of the Roth conversions? No, no. But something to be considered about. Now you got to know what's going on in the tax code. And this is from the House Ways and Means Committee. And once it gets through House Ways and Means, it's usually, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty definitively going to probably come law. It's still got to go through, the Senate's got to pass their bill, and it's got to go to committee. But everything originates in the House Ways and Means. Just always remember that. So, if it's, uh, if it's got its way through the House Ways and Means, it's probably going to come to law. So you need to be wary of this. I'm, uh, I'm not quite as ominous as what old Brett says here. And I think he might have missed something. Um, this is Brett Aarons. And I like Brett. I, I think he's kind of a lefty guy, but whatever. Congress is about to kill this popular retirement tax move. All right. If you're planning on doing a Roth IRA conversion to keep your retirement savings permanently out of the hands of the IRS, you might want to get on it. Get down on it. Choo-choo. Get down on it. The new tax bill is going to scrap these conversions for everybody at the end of the year. And no, not just those earning more than 400000 bucks. The bill prohibits all employee after-tax contributions in qualified plans and prohibits after-tax IRA contributions from being converted to Roth regardless of income level. Effective for distributions, transfers, and contributions. So I looked at it. I said, well, let's take a look at this. And uh, we just went up here. We did control F, we typed in Roth, we hit this guy, uh, and we got the first increase in minimum distributions for high income taxpayers with large retirement account balances. That's if your retirement account exceeds 10 million bucks and you got you make over, I think it's 450,000 a year for married, 400 for single, you're gonna have to reduce your re retirement account by an amount equal so you can get back to 10 million bucks. And that's that's pretty freaking brutal, but whatever. I mean, it's just <laughs> what you, you can gripe, but what are you going to do, man? Um, that's that's pretty bad. All right. Part two is essentially a wealth tax. And I mean, at the end of the day, it is what it is. All right. So let's keep going. I want to show you, though, something else that uh, right to under current. All right. So they get all right. Under current law, contributions to Roth IRAs have income limits. Uh, however, in 2010, the similar income limits for Roth conversions were repealed, which allowed anyone to contribute to a Roth IRA through a conversion, irrespective of the still enforced income limits for Roth IRAs. All right, so in order to close this backdoor loophole that Congress passed, the bill eliminates Roth conversions for both IRA and employer-sponsored plans for single taxpayers with income over 400 or married taxpayers with income over 450. All right. This provision applies to all distribution transfers and contributions made in taxable years beginning after 2031. So that's you got 10 years for that to happen. However, here's what I think Brett's getting all upset about. Uh, furthermore, the prohibit this section prohibits all employee after tax contributions and qualified plans and prohibits after tax IRA contributions from being converted to Roth, regardless of income level. All right. So that's what Brett's talking about. He's saying the bill prohibits all employee after-tax contributions and qualified plans and prohibits after-tax IRA contributions from being converted to Roth, regardless of income level, and that'll be effective this year. I hope you guys are seeing where I think Brett's missing it here. All right, let's just read down a little bit. The clause is in addition to the separate steps for being for eliminating the, the backdoor Roth and stuff. All right. Uh, right there, backdoor Roth. Incidentally, the bill also ends the backdoor Roth. Hmm. Uh, that was allowing high earners to get around income limits or contributions. All right, so there are two kinds. Of, so he talks about the IRAs and stuff, and that's fine. Um, until now, the money in the IRA could convert them to Roth if they paid the tax. So if you say accumulate 50000 in an IRA, you could add that 50000 to your taxable income for that year, pay tax on it, and convert it to a Roth. There won't be any more tax to pay in the future. This move, if it stays in the bill, has big implications. That it means they will effectively end IRA tax breaks for most people making more than 140000 single or 208 married filing jointly. All right. There are, there are wrinkles. So it doesn't look like Roth, doesn't look like they're going after Roth 401k plans where it contributes to the company's retirement plan using after tax dollars. Right, exactly. Um, this guy says he's never been a big fan of the Roth IRAs or Roth conversions as a conventional wisdom of financial planning business. Oh, I am, but at the end of the day, I'm a big fan of this this other thing too. Uh, all right. Furthermore, I've always figured job one of my retirement savings isn't to make me rich, uh, but I'm uh, but to make sure I'm not poor. But another reason I'm wearing Roth IRAs, I don't trust politicians. All right. So uh, either way, I didn't see any comments on here, which is too bad, man, because uh, I was hoping to see some comments. I guess you can't comment, but. 
I want to go to something. We're going to go to old Becky. All right, so we're going to go to Becky here, and we're going to have her retiring. Yeah, we're going to have her retiring at the, we're just going to say she's retired. And we're going to say 20. All right, because it's another easy strategy. I don't know why more people don't get this. All right, so Becky's going to retire. We're just going to say she has $1.145 in a brokerage account. And we can do any amount we want. It doesn't have to be anything specific to $1.145. It doesn't matter. We're going to say she's going to get, uh, she'll get, I don't know, whatever we have in Social Security. We'll just, we'll make up a number. We'll say 2500 bucks a month. There we go. 2500 bucks a month is her PIA. So she'll get about 3300 bucks a month when she hits 70 years old. All right. So the number one thing is how much does she need? So we're going to say, we don't need 15000 We're going to say she needs $5,000 a month for her retirement expenses. All right. 5000 bucks a month. And we're going to have her live in until she is 90 years old. Everybody with me? All right. And all, so all she has is she has a uh, VTI. Total stock index is uh, annual return 6.5 with a standard deviation of 16.4, which if we take our trusty calculator, is, I tell you, this is so simple. Once you know how to do this, you're like, oh, man, I, knew, I know how to do that. You take 16.4, you times it by three, you basically get 50. It's 49.2 to be specific. And then you add 6.5 and you subtract 6.5. So basically her worst year will be down 44% and her best year could be up 56% if that makes sense. So we basically have a little bit worse year than 2008 already baked into the system. All right, so we're going to go to retirement and we're going to look out the window and because uh, it doesn't matter. And not, she's not run out of money. So let's just make sure that took. But I want to show you something here because why? All right. So, oh, my lands. Look at this. She has no income coming in when she's 61 or 62. Actually, we're going to add something else to this. We got it. Let's add health care. Everyone says, what about health care? Oh, my goodness. There's no health care. And we're going to go to uh, add expense. Wait, wait, wait. I thought it was on here. Um, retirement. Health care right there. Right there. Health care. And we're just going to say healthcare. care. I'm going to say when she's not on, there you go, perfect. So if she's, uh, before she's on Medicare, she's on Obamacare, it's 3000 bucks a month because she's going to get some Obamacare, 3000 bucks a year. So 250 bucks a month will probably be cheaper than that because she's going to get the Obamacare credits. We'll show you why here in just a second. And when she's on Medicare, it's going to go to about uh, double that to about 6000 bucks a year, uh, about 500 bucks a month. All right. So let's go back to retirement. So she'll be paying uh, some money for Medicare as well. All right, so let's go to cash flow. And she doesn't, I mean, we just need 5,000. We can add whatever we want. I don't care. So if I, we can say we can add a, uh, if we want, we can add a house. Say our house is paid off. We got property. We'll say her property tax is 5,000 a year. And we'll even say her insurance is 2,500 a year. And it costs 3,000 a year in maintenance. All right, you see where I'm going with this. All right. So again, she's taking... I mean, 5,000 a month is a 6% distribution yield, right? Yes, it is. Because uh, six, uh, that's, I mean, well, it's not quite six, but it's a little bit more than six. All right, so let's, let's go into this here. All right, so what's happening? We got uh, Social Security at 70, um, a retirement right there, 5,000 a month, boink. All right. And she has a 70% probability of success. And we'll get in that here in just a second. That's still pretty good. Uh, we're going to change her distribution strategy uh, to take 5000 a month. We're going to say as she gets older, she'll spend less. Her retirement, yeah, right there, retirement spending stage is good. All right, so I just want to show you guys something here. But I'm not worried about this in the least. No, and if that were you, I'd say, yeah, you're fine. Why? Because checks out. Go to cash flows. Remember, she has no pre-tax, no post-tax, no pre-tax money. So she's living on $75,000 a year. Why is she living on $75,000 a year? Because we go to her expenses and she has living expenses of 5,000 bucks a month, housing costs of 10,000 bucks a year, Obamacare 3,000 bucks a year. Her total expenses are 75,000 bucks. What is her taxes? Her tax payments are $2,000 a year. Why? Let's go. We'll check it out. We'll see what her taxes is. And we're going to see 2,000 bucks. Her tax, she has a total income 67 minus her deduction. Her taxable income is 54,000 bucks. That's her standard deduction. But if we go to the profile, we go to 1.145 million, we're going to see that she has a cost basis of $500,000. So now we'll go back to the tax chart here. 
And look at that. She's paying effective 10.8% tax later on in her life. It's just not that big of a deal. And we'll show you. So we go to 2022. And she's going to have a little bit of capital gain, right? Let's see. Total income, 44000 Any amount from Schedule 1. We're going to go to Schedule 1. And that should be a 44000 from a capital gain. So we go to Schedule D. And you're going to see she had to sell some stocks from that VTI to live on. 44000 is what she had to sell. Um, and so that's her, is that her total long-term capital gain? Yeah, that's going to be um, right there. So 44000 So she only has to pay $2,000 in taxes. That's it, man. 2000 bucks in taxes. I mean, look at that. What a wonderful thing. All right, so now we go back to her Schedule 1, just to double check. Say, yep, there's a 4438 capital gain or loss. And we, you, it's, just, it's just not that big of a deal. And so she, because she's only paying... Uh, we go back to 1040 she have gone here because she's only she only in 2022 because her taxable income is 67,000 um, bucks it's actually total income 67 so yeah uh, so she'll get some so she eh, she might not get Obamacare I don't know it frankly it doesn't matter the point what matters is we go to the tax right here she's only paying Two thousand. Look at that. That's it. That's it. Two thousand. And we go to total taxes due. Go up to here. Her total taxes are three hundred seventeen thousand bucks. When Social Security kicks in, that's when she pays more. But still, man, you got plan distribution. Not much. So let's move that. Let's actually see what it's going. So three hundred seventeen thousand dollars. Let's take her taking Social Security actually at sixty seven instead of seventy. Let's just see what that looks like. All right, now we're taking at sixty seven, and it drops at a sixty seven percent. That it doesn't matter because she's not going to spend this much um, the rest of her life. But either way, so her total taxes here are three seventeen under current. Go to propose once you've taken Social Security at 67 and click tax payment. And it's 291. So she saves a little bit in taxes. Now let's do this instead. Let's have her having all that money in IRA. I don't know why they got planned distribution from what exactly. I'm not sure where they're getting that bump. But we're just going to put this into an IRA and watch the difference. All right. Just watch what happens to the taxes now. So it went from 67 and 70 to 54 and 55. And she's leaving, look at that, only 90,000. You see that? Oof. And her taxes, man. Let's go to cash flow. Look at that. 12,000, 12,000. She's going to pay five, based almost twice as much in taxes. It's not good. So if you really are worried about the Roth IRA going away, what you do is you freaking, oh, I gotta go to savings, that's what it was. Let's get rid of that. Hmm. Yeah, there we go. If you're really, okay, that might change things a little bit. I forgot I had that on there. If you're worried about taxes, what, what we got here? Um, no retirement, there we go. Look at that. She's leaving $400,000 more. She's paying half in taxes. I mean, just that. Stop doing your 401k and your pre-tax money. I'm telling you. Look at that. Uh, just stop doing that, man. Start putting in just a good old-fashioned brokerage account. It's liquid. It's accessible. Now, if you got a, a match, yeah, take advantage of that. But on that, man. Just good old fashioned brokerage account. Now, will they get rid of you know capital gain and dividend taxes? Probably. This is a one shot deal for Sniffy Joe, just like Obama did. It's a one shot deal. The pendulum swings, it swings back. It'll come back. But I mean, look, they're going. I think they'll probably get rid of the Roth. What they're talking about here, I, I get it. They want money, they're going to get money, and the Roth is a great way to take it from people who have deferred accounts. You know, they started with the getting rid of the, uh, the Secure Act, getting rid of the stretch IRAs. This is bound to come. I mean, really started when they say. Uh, IRAs, non-spousal IRAs and 401ks, um, beneficiary IRAs are not free from uh, lawsuits. That was a unanimous decision by the Supreme Court in 2014. And so you can see the mile away. They don't want inheritance to go to your 
kids. They want you to pay tax on it without stretching it. You can see that a mile away. So now the next thing is obviously to get more tax money up front. That's what they're doing. So one way to do that is to stop contributing to pre-tax money and just go ahead and put in post-tax money. So that way when you're retired, you don't have to worry about it. Love your thoughts. We'll see you.